Um, just want to welcome you here this morning for part of our continuing series of uh, workshops for newly elected leaders. Um, this is sponsored, of course, by uh, the League of Cities and Towns, as well as the Hassenfeld Institute at Bryant and um, the Rhode Island Association of School Committees. Today, we're really excited to have um, David Preston and Lauren Green of New Harbor Group here with us. Um, they are a public uh, policy and communications agency um, located in Providence and uh, certainly top notch at what they do. Um, they are uh, our, our communication group at the league and um, we really enjoy working with them. And we know that you're gonna get a lot out of this presentation as well. Um, so with that in mind, I will turn it over to David and uh, get started. Thanks. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, glad to be here with everybody. Uh, see some folks I recognize uh, on the guest list. And so today, like um, Jen said, we're just going to talk about the opportunities and the ways to get your message and your information out um, in an era where there's so much noise out there. And, but not only that, also in the last 10 or 15 years, uh, as the local press corps has shrunk, um, there's not even that third party platform to deliver your message. So what we're gonna talk about today is just some of the basic 101 of how to use the tools that are out there um, to deliver your message and important information about your community. Um, and so in, in addition to getting that information out, it also allows you to frame initiatives and frame decisions that have been made uh, on your own terms. And so, you know, it's important for folks to understand that, um, you know, as they make their way and they, and they discuss these things in the public realm. One of the things that we found is that a lot of uh, local officials say to us, you know, we try to get information out, but, you know, there's these websites that spring up kind of ad hoc in the community um, and folks go to them and they get information that may or may not be uh, correct. So this is kind of, in addition to the, the, the benefits that you see on there, I would draw your attention to the third bullet, uh, become the go-to hub of information and activity. That's really, really important. Uh, and we're going to walk through how we can make that happen uh, today. So uh, on the next slide, we've got kind of a, a list of um, things not to do. Um, because it's really important to become credible. Credibility is really important. Um, and so if you're overtly political or um, you know, you're not viewed as an honest communications broker, it undermines the credibility of the site. Um, and over the long term, uh, will make it much more difficult to establish yourself as the go-to hub, which is really the, the goal of the exercise, to become the go-to hub uh, of information. And so usually what we do for all our clients, the League of Cities and Towns, uh, Quonset, Graysale Brewery, the Boy Scouts, and uh, all the others, uh, is we apply kind of a four-step process, uh, which is kind of a core message. Uh, what is the central core thing that folks need to know about you and kind of sets up a scaffolding for everything else that you say about yourself? What is content that reinforces that message um, that you're saying about yourself. Who's your audience? Who do you want to talk to? Who do you need to deliver this information to? Not just so that they're informed, um, but so that they become messengers for you. So they say, hey, I went to the, you know, the, the town website, or I went to the town Facebook page, uh, or I went to the school committee Facebook page, or, or you know, the town councilor's Facebook page, and I found the information. And so they become messengers for you and allies for you. Uh, and then the question, the last thing, once you've got a core message, once you've got content uh, that reinforces the message, who you want to talk to, the next is the distribution network. How are we going to get it out there? And so in the context of um, municipalities, you know, just generically speaking, and I, and I know everybody feels about this way about their hometown, you want to let folks know it's a great place to live and it's a well-run community. Um, and that's really important to have that overarching message. Um, you know, what is content that would reinforce that? 
Well, you could say deliver information about local events. You could deliver information about um, vaccination opportunities. You could deliver information about the status of the COVID restrictions. But also, it's important to talk about you know the great things that the kids are doing at the high school. Um, you know the great things that the town is achieving. Um, so all of those things really kind of go to re and there's no shortage of those. Uh, all those go to reinforce the notion that your town is a great place to live and it's a well-run community. So who do you need to say this to? Well, you know, obviously residents, um, but public officials need to know town employees, uh, local media to the extent it exists, uh, because, you know, quite often you'll have local media. If you've got, for instance, the Valley Breeze uh, in the northern part of the state, if they see a nice story about something that a uh, a kid did at school or in the scouts, uh, they might do a story about it. And then you can take that story um, and amplify it on social media because it's always great to get third party validation uh, whenever it's possible. And then finally, uh, the tools that we use uh, for all our clients, in addition to get a lot of great coverage, um, is our social media um, and electronic communications, which also includes um, email newsletters, which uh, we are a big fan of uh, at our firm. Uh, we've used them with great success. So now I'm gonna pass it off to Lauren, um, who has a great deal of expertise in the day-to-day -day execution of, of doing this in, in a way that's really quite, quite excellent. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. Um, as David had just alluded to, um, we're going to discuss two specific communications platforms today, which is social media and electronic electronic communications like newsletters. Um, as a start, um, we think these are two um, key foundational pieces of your communication strategy. Um, in this day and age, social, social media is no longer uh, nice to have. It's part of uh, everyday life um, and with residents in New York community uh, constantly on the go, particularly if they have children, um, it allows them to access updates um, on their own time um, and integrates into um, their daily lives a little more easily than um, being in front of the television at five o'clock on the dock to watch um, the local news. Um, and in addition, in the case of communities that have weekly only newspapers, um, social media provides an opportunity to share information um, in a more timely fashion um, on your own terms as well. So consistency and commitment are really key, especially when you are just starting um, it's hard for people to consistently go to your social media pages if you're posting um, once on a Monday and then you don't post again for three weeks. Um, I know this is difficult if you don't have a full-time staff person to run your social, me social media, um, but again, important to set up and hold yourself accountable to a schedule at first, even if you say, I'm just going to post on Monday as a recap or to share news that's happening later in the week or on a Friday, Monday and Friday, um, for some communities that are able to have um, someone dedicated or a few people dedicated to the social media pages, Monday, Wednesday, Friday um, is another great time uh, to post. But I would commit to sharing at least one to two times per week. Um, and you'll find it amazing once you start how much information you really do have to share um, and eventually uh, end up going well beyond one to two um, times a week. Um, visuals uh, are really not just nice to have either. They're really eye-catching. They make people stop and read. Um, in addition, um, video as well allows you to speak directly with your constituents and for them to um, have a little more of a human uh, touch and will make them stop uh, and read and listen. Um, it's important to or helpful to build a photo library when you're out at events in the community or really just out in your community walking around. Great to start taking photos um, yourself or collect um, through staff, DPW is out and about, planning, um, et cetera. I'm reminding some key staff to uh, continue to take photos to build a library. Um, 
I highlighted here on the last bullet, Canva, there are a lot of um, platforms out there that can help you um, make graphics without having to be a graphic designer. They have great templates and have free um, photos that don't have any copyright infringement attached to them. We like to use Canva. There are others that are out there, but really just quick and easy graphic making that able to download and then instantly upload to social media um, that can take five minutes or less rather than trying to create something that's catchy, especially if you are um, not the most creative and don't have time. Um, <clears throat> while there are immediate communications needs um, like parking bans, snowstorm information, changes with the to the trash schedule, um, Social media also gives you an opportunity, as David had stated earlier, um, to highlight your community um, and thinking about ways that your community is unique. Um, a lot of times this happens through annual events that happen every um, year or month, um, but sharing good community stories, um, especially in this uh, time where people are feeling very heavy burden um, with COVID-19, are mostly at home, um, sharing good news stories um, is very helpful. Um, newsletters, we are a big fan of these. It allows you to go a little bit deeper than social media um, and communicate directly with constituents. Um, it also gives you an opportunity to highlight media coverage and perhaps go more in depth than the one to two minute story that was on channel 10, for example, um, last night provide more context. And in the event that the news story aired on a Monday and there was an issue in your community and you've already mobilized to fix it, um, a newsletter at the end of the week highlighting how you've already addressed and fixed this problem is also a great way um, to show that you are on top of things um, and being held accountable. The most popular platforms that we tend to use are Constant Contact, MailChimp, Sender is more of a newer one. Um, I'd say some considerations with each of these platforms is looking at the different price point for the amount of emails that they let you send. MailChimp has a little bit of a higher threshold before um, you have to pay. Uh, but for the most part, especially when you're getting started, um, the free plans that um, each, of, each of them offer um, will, in the most, most cases, um, you'll be able to stay under the free threshold. Um, how to build your list. Uh, email addresses are everywhere. It's just in most cases, we're not asking people for them. Um, different type of community events like to go around and ask and ask people, even if it's just with a clipboard, we haven't been in person for a while, but having a very clear um, sign up for our newsletter on your main website, as well as links to your social media channels up front in a very large font, constantly promoting on social media, sign up for our newsletter. Did you see our latest newsletter? Here's a link to it. Um, please sign up for it. And asking your family and friends um, and neighbors is a great way to sign up, um, especially at the beginning of the pandemic, news was here, there, and everywhere. Um, and I think we can build upon that as an example that government is a trusted uh, partner to get news out there to the community, um, especially you know best what's most important to your neighbors. And let me go back to this for a minute. Um, I would say, as we were talking about social media um, and having a best practice of posting at least one to two times a month, I think for the newsletter as well, um, it's important to figure out what's doable for you. For a municipality, um, I would say at least on a bi-weekly basis. Um, most communities do this on a weekly basis at the end of the week. Um, but if you're hesitant that you can't get this done every week, I would commit to bi-weekly. Um, for an elected official that's going to send this out um, under their own um, name once a month, I think is appropriate enough. And then I would plan that around um, when you are having, when you typically have your either town council 
for school committee meetings, um, either right before to preview what's happening at the meeting and describe sort of where you stand on some of the issues or to do it as a recap um, of the month, including the meetings that you had. Um, for social media, my last note is for social media, um, as well as the newsletter, I think it also provides an opportunity to um, lay the foundation for public meetings as well. Um, most of them have been done on Zoom and for some that will probably still continue um, to at least be streamed live. Um, but I think in for an example, um, a contentious zoning um, meeting, a lot of time is uh, spent at the beginning of meetings talking about directions and how public comment is going to run. And sometimes things become very contentious right at the outset of the meeting because the public doesn't understand how you run your meetings. They've probably only attended this one meeting because they're interested or it's happening in their neighborhood. I think it's a great opportunity on social media to lay the foundation. We know a lot of people are going to attend. Here's how we're running the meeting. Um, and if the meeting is set up for experts to talk for two hours at the beginning of the meeting about the engineering plans and landscaping plans, et cetera, um, and the public is not aware, they think they're going to come on the meeting right away um, and be able to give their opinion. Um, they're going to be very upset when they find out that they've had to sit through this meeting for two hours before they get to speak. So um, I think it can also um, not eliminate, but um, bring down the temperature on some uh, issues by communicating with folks directly, um, especially when it comes to government processes that they're really not familiar with. Um, so I, I think that's all David and I have for now. Um, we'd like to open it up for questions. Um, we could probably talk about social and newsletters and other platforms for hours, but just want to get everyone's um, toes wet and people are at varying um, levels of implementation. So we're happy to take more questions that are um, focused on both or um, other avenues as well. Jen, is everyone able to unmute themselves and ask questions or how do you want to handle that? Yes, um, if anybody does have a question, please feel free to uh, unmute and um, maybe if you want to raise your hand, we could do that if there's a, a line or if you want to add questions to the chat, we could do that as well. So Nikki, you raised a tricky question uh, and, and we see this a lot. Um, for some of our Facebook pages, uh, for instance, we just did um, the ballot question seven in the, in the bond uh, referendum back in March. And we really, really were very active and successfully so on social media. Um, but it was an amazing amount of comments that would come that have absolutely nothing to do uh, with the matter at hand. Um, it seems that Facebook quite often is, is um, you know, an outlet for people for other things. Um, so what we started to do, um, and we started it late, I wish I had thought of it earlier, was to uh, message the person and say, you know, feel free to call us at this number um, and then hide them. And a, uh, an amazingly small percentage uh, of people would actually call, um, but it does check the responsive box, uh, and it does um, clean up your 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 Facebook feed. Um, you know, which is really not an op. You know, you don't spend the time and effort to create a Facebook page uh, so that people can behave badly on it. Um, and so, you know, there shouldn't be, you know, obviously as a public official, you've got to put up a, with a little bit more than, than a normal person would, um, but there's no obligation uh, to have your Facebook page hijacked by, um, you know, irrelevant material, particularly when you've got, you know, it, it does, it could play such an important role. So that's just one of the things that we've done in the past. Um, and I agree that if you did try to respond, particularly since I think it's fair to say a majority of it is just irrelevant, um, it would be a full-time job and it would defeat the purpose.
Other questions? Uh, if I may, I just uh, wanted to state like a challenge I think I see as well as that there are, in our case, there's already some really established community mechanisms for um, communication, like from the, the PTO level, I'm at a school committee, so at the PTO level already, <clears throat> and on the town side as well. So I wonder if you could speak a little bit about how um, a group interested in, in starting sort of a more proactive communication strategy could effectively enter a communication space that already has some established channels. All right, so I'll pass that one on to Lauren. That's a good question. Um, so I'm gonna I'll take a different um, vein than setting up your own social media um, and newsletter than we discussed here. If you find that your school department, which you have a great relationship with, and or your PTO already has a very established and followed page, um, I would have a discussion with them about. Um, perhaps setting up a um, monthly event where you have a almost interview type relationship video that you um, tape yourselves or you can have your own Zoom meeting where you're talking about relevant topics if it's something that's more in depth. Um, you're working on a strategic plan that you're about to announce and you wanna talk more to the community about what's in there um, you're starting a new initiative. Um, I wouldn't solely, re solely rely on folks attending the school committee meeting to hear more um, and or sharing the report with your um, local reporter and hoping that they get everything in there. Um, so that's one way. I would say the newsletter would probably um, be um, most relevant. Um, it will allow you to do similar to what I just said, getting a little more in depth without having to post on a daily or weekly basis. And I would talk to your school department again and PTO if they already have established social media, social media channels, um, ask them to share the link to um, the newsletter, which Constant Contact and MailChimp or others will give you a direct link once you send out the newsletter um, and sharing it uh, that way. Um, I think the beginning of your conversation um, about communications planning needs to talk about what you have the bandwidth to do and what you can do consistently. Um, and if you're not ready to take that jump to have your own um, dedicated social media page, um, I think there are other workarounds to rely on others in the community to share your messages. Thank you very much. Other questions or comments, folks? Or even ideas that you might have that you kind of want to float by the experts? You know, Mark had a comment uh, about, uh, you can see in the chat, about folks not required to identify themselves. Um, you know, our approach to that, and obviously with every rule, there are exceptions, um, but you know, if, if you've got a person like that who's, you know, uh, got some kind of uh, gnome de guerre that they use, uh, you know, like Che Guevara online, um, if you reach out to them and, and do that, hey, here's my number if you want to call me, um, and then hide them, the chances of that person actually calling um, are pretty slim. And, um, and so you can feel pretty good. You can feel, you know, you can feel like you're not violating some social contract um, by s giving them a chance to speak with you directly uh, and hiding them um, if, that, if that happens. But, you know, you're, and, and you know, the other thing too is, if, you know, my view, uh, because, you know, you guys have got the, your names out there um, and you're in the arena, so to speak, as, as President Roosevelt would say, um, and you know, my view is if someone can't share their name, uh, unless they have a really good reason, like they're a whistleblower or something, um, then you know, they're a lesser priority in the context of engagement. Um, this is uh, Mark from Charlestown. Can, can you hear me? Okay. Hi, Mark. Hi, I just wanted to make a comment. In Charlestown, we do a 
it's not a newsletter, but it's basically a, well, it could be, it, it's a pamphlet. We usually send them out twice a year uh, to every every address in the town. And one of them is usually for the budget referendum. And then we have another one in the fall. Usually, we usually, because uh, we're a coastal community, we normally uh, gauge that around uh, hurricane season, you know, preparedness, you know, th th those, those types of things. We haven't used it, you know, much for um, information because as you mentioned earlier, there, there is a really, um, um, can be a gray line between what people view as political at some point in time or, or that you're, you are supporting a particular point of view versus, you know, quote the truth. It's kind of, you know, very elusive nowadays to find the truth. So I, I just wanted to, you know, make that particular comment. And I don't you know, know if we could um, use our twice yearly, you know, blast every, everyone in the community to, to greater effect. I don't know how that might be done. Yeah, I do think that there is still a role uh, for the U.S. mail uh, in this kind of thing. Um, what we use it for now is to lead people to our digital platforms. Um, we've kind of given up on mail as a persuasive or an informative um, vehicle, um, largely because the digital vehicles are so much better and so much less expensive. Um, but, you know, when we do have a client, so for instance, when we did question seven, we did one mailer and it was largely, you know, very high level messages. Um, and then, you know, find out more on our digital platforms and we listed them there. So that, in my view, uh, is the role of mail, um, you know, these days in 2021. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think in your mailer this year, um, I would make sure that your um, the Facebook graphic is on there and um, has the name of Charleston's Facebook page as well as probably a link to the website um, and where to sign up for the newsletter. Um, Mark, if you're gonna continue the newsletter beyond the age of COVID, um, maybe it mo won't be um, weekly like it is now, but if you guys make the decision that you're still going to keep the newsletter um, on a less frequent basis. Um, the city of Pawtucket um, has a calendar that they put out um, each year and the first, I'd say, 15 pages are information about the community. They send those uh, out to folks that have um, new, have purchased new homes throughout the year or have moved. Um, while the calendar is a uh, higher price point um, and a whole process that they go through, I think one takeaway from there is engaging with people that are new to your community. And I would say the same thing about schools. Um, do parents have the information or links to the channels that they need to um, follow for the most up-to-date information. Um, a little easier there um, because they get phone numbers um, for text message updates um, and newsletters um, depending on the frequency of your community. But just making sure that people know where to go to access information is a constant drumbeat over and over and over again. Hi, this is Gina Bay. Um, I'm chair of the school committee in Barrington. Um, I had a question about um, delineating the difference between communications coming from like a school committee board as an entity um, versus um, each of us as individual elected officials um, and, and how to sort of manage that difference. Um, I know that someone put in making sure that if you have your own personal newsletter things out there to make sure you're you're expressing your own views and not speaking on before on behalf of the board um, but then also the difference from that to operational stuff that should be just coming from like say the superintendent or the principals around things like kindergarten registration or you know that kind of nitty-gritty informational stuff um, could you speak more on on how, how to navigate that. Um, I find myself in a really tough spot as chair, just trying to be careful with, you know, 
people perceiving things that I may say as being on behalf of the committee um, and and trying to enforce that it may be me just my own personal views. Kind of yeah. thing. So policies and disclaimers are really important, obviously. Um, and so <clears throat> it would be important for you as the chair, the school committee members uh, and the superintendent and the actual school department, just to kind of figure out who's going to do and say what, uh, that's really important. Um, and, and that can be, uh, you know, codified is the wrong word, but, but you can come up with policies uh, for that. The other thing that, you know, you can do is amplify each other's um, content. So if you as the school committee chair, um, you know, want to share with your followers about kindergarten registration um, and the superintendent has, you know, already put something up, you can share that um, as well. And so once you've got those policies in place, it's just easier and it really becomes more of a function of, you know, what's my lane and what can I talk about? Um, and then secondarily, how do I amplify other things that are in other people's lanes uh, that are important for me, that are important for folks to know who follow me? The, the other thing that you want to be mindful of is, again, you know, you want to avoid the scenario where, you know, and we hear it from municipal leaders all the time, that you've got these random unofficial Facebook pages out there that become like real sources of information. Um, the best way to combat that uh, is to be credible. And the best way to combat that uh, is to be accurate, um, kind of a matter of fact, um, you know, source of, you know, straight up information. And so, you know, that's kind of a sidelight to the main answer, which is, you know, policies and procedures really can solve, I'm going to say 80 to 90 percent uh, of that uncertainty. Yeah, I think your awareness of it is step one. Um, some people, <laughs> um, it seems obvious, but not always. Um, I think repetitiveness over and over again, especially if you're doing an interview with the media, um, is what has the superintendent um, already talked to them about um, are making sure that you are setting parameters for the interview. I'm speaking as uh, Gina, um, school committee member, not as the entire committee as a whole, um, giving your colleagues on the committee uh, a heads up um, that these questions, you know, might be coming um, and that you just provided an overview of the meeting, um, not your thoughts specifically or the, or the council's direction that they're going in. Um, so the training today, um, not difficult, but we have a lot of um, partners on the line in various um, uh, levels of government. So uh, municipality, it's a little easier for them to have a municipal Facebook page. Um, I'm not saying that it's not a good idea, but probably a little more difficult for the school committee to have their own Facebook page. Um, I would say that that's a scenario where it makes sense that you, Gina, have your own um, Facebook page as a committee member and or candidate um, and you're sharing information that the superintendent or the school department has shared on their page um, and then uh, provide you know reminders we have a school committee meeting coming up on thursday here's a link to the agenda here's what you should know um, about public comment or, or other things that you know are going to come up and then um, if you feel like you need to explain yourself on a vote or um, some policy that you are planning on introducing, I think that's a great avenue for a newsletter um, and sharing it on your social media account. It gives you a little more um, leeway with regard to length. I'm calling, for, I'm on from Newport, Sandra Flowers, and I've been on for a number of years now, but when you're talking about policy, it is very important to make your policies as 
unambiguous as possible. And we are, we have been constantly revising so that everyone knows his or her um, responsibilities and rights. Uh, earlier when you were talking about uh, disseminating information, you know, via the web and all this sort of a thing. And there's always a difficulty whether you're dealing with the public at large or the, um, you know, parents of the uh, youngsters in school. Not everyone has access to the technology, either because they don't want to, and there are some who don't uh, of all ages, and there are some who just don't check the, uh, the messages. So sometimes that printed paper is a very, very important thing. And, and there are many who don't even read the local paper. You know, sometimes there's, it's a few days behind. Uh, so there are always alternate ways to get the information out. Uh, when we hear in Newport and probably on a lot of other um, school department and, and uh, city sites too, the municipal sites, the contact information for each of the council members, <clears throat> excuse me, our um, school committee members is right there. Uh, we have a school department email addresses, our own personal email addresses, telephone numbers, cell numbers, and people will contact. And for my part, I don't get as many uh, calls from uh, the people that maybe some others do um, for whatever reason. Um, I also taught in the Newport schools for 30 years, so I've taught a lot of these folks and worked with them. Um, but again, you sometimes have to know when you are confronted, even on the phone, with someone who is just going to be terribly argumentative. Uh, it, sometimes it's not easy, but you have to be very patient and you have to sometimes know when to bring the call to a close. And that can happen in person too. You know, sometimes the, the comment, someday maybe we can sit down and, and uh, over a cup of coffee. And, and speak about a particular issue. But sometimes that can be a bit difficult. And just one more thing, we, we really work at saying, who is the spokesperson for say, all right, in our case, the school committee. And it is the chair, or if the chair has designated someone to do that, that's why you have vice chairs. Um, uh, anytime that I have, uh, not as often now, but when I've wanted to say to write in the, in the local media, write to the paper, I would always clear it with the chair first, if it had to do with any school issue. And because it's, you know, supportive of what is going on. Uh, it's wise not to get into a, uh, a spitting match with people in public. That's an important point too. So, uh, again, I'm, I'm hardly newly elected, but I say we, we find something new all the time. And I would advise any of the newly elected people here to keep involved and keep learning something. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Um, I think there's, well, there are a lot of important points, but there's something um, that you said in there that struck me a little bit, and it's, um, that there's controversy all the time and not everyone's going to be in agreement. And I find that that's a major reason why people are hesitant to communicate is because it's a contentious or divisive issue. Um, it's however, someone's going to be communicating about it. If it's not the official body, um, someone else is going to take um, the position and take up the airtime to talk about the issue, whether it be a parent, whether it be an angry neighbor, um, whether it be an organization in your community. Um, I, I think it's always um, prudent to be cautious um, and to have a clear um, plan in place um, as an organization of how you're going to tackle the issue. Um, but staying away from something because um, and makes you uncomfortable um, or is creating a kerfuffle in the community 
um, is really not advantageous um, because before you know it, which in sometimes is in an hour, and the narrative has already gotten away from you and it's very hard to get it back. Um, I see a question in the chat from Melissa Boyd. I just need some clarification. Um, Melissa, so it's, is there any guidance for school committees, town council members for conduct during meetings, specifically addressing use of social media, other websites, email messages, as long as there's no um, open meeting violations. So do you mean that um, like using social media during a meeting, like live tweeting or messaging, or I just need a little clarification um, on your question. Hi, yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Um, absolutely, I think um, as a new SC member trying to find um, obviously ethical boundaries, appropriate skills of what are ways that if folks are communicating with us, maybe it is a, a, a question, maybe it is a comment, um, how might we, you know, move through those things um, and and not have an OMA violation, but at the same time, you know, are there limits on, you know, freedom of speech in terms of an elected official? So trying to to figure out what that line is, and as a newly elected person, I've I've not really been able to find those guidelines from the Rhode Island Ethics Commission or from the Rhode Island School Board um, areas, and and wanting to bring that back to my own um, area to hopefully have a good discussion about it. Um, okay, I don't want to um, give legal advice, and although David is an attorney, um, I'm not sure, David, if you want to weigh in, but um, I am actually want uh, Jen to weigh in here. So, Jen, you've done the open meetings trainings, and not that you need to give an answer, but is this a topic that has been addressed um, in those trainings, and can we provide Melissa with some um, more concrete information as a follow-up to the meeting, or really to anyone I'm here. Yeah, so I don't, I mean, I've been through many, many OMA presentations um, and generally speaking, it's not something that they typically have covered, um, but I would recommend reaching out to the open government unit of the attorney general's office. Um, the head of that is a woman named Kate Sadek, S-A-D-E-C-K, and um, really anyone in that unit would be um, appropriate to, to speak with. But um, if I'm understanding correctly what Melissa was saying, um, if it's messaging during the meeting um, with each other, is that, if, is that what I interpreted correctly? Um, yes, that might be the case and not necessarily from other elected officials, but community members as well. Okay, gotcha. Um, yeah, that's a tricky one because um, certainly, you know, behind the scenes, sometimes we need to remind people of something or or whatnot. Um, but I uh, yeah, I and even the attorney general's office, it's going to be very situational. They like for you to provide an example. Um, but I would say, as your comments on social media, um, with regard to social media, that should be a topic that they're tackling because it's a new form. Um, of communication that people are constantly using um, and official channels are being set up. So I'm also happy to talk more to you about that. And I'm sure Jen can provide the information um, to for the AG's office. And then Jen, maybe for the next open meeting training, this is um, something that you can flag for them beforehand and perhaps they can um, weigh in directly during the training. Yep, absolutely. And I will um, share their contact info in the chat as well. <clears throat> oh, Jean. Jean has her hand raised. Let me unmute. OK, there we go. Hi, Jean. Hi. Uh, just the last question that was asked. Um, my commit my committee not knowing in other words we didn't pass any resolutions or anything but we were in the um midst of some critical votes that had to be taken about an issue in town and we found that outsiders were texting members of the school committee to vote the way they wanted them to vote so that was a simple solution is there's no 
media, you electric media, other than our computers for the uh, meeting is to be allowed while you are in meeting uh, because it, it became a distraction because people were texting back and et cetera. So uh, we made it a policy that there would be no other means of communication at while we're in session. Uh, and we eliminated it right away. It, 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 everything stopped because they, we were not allowed to have our, our cell phones with us at the table. Uh, so I don't know if that will help her. Uh, and also we have a policy uh, too that we made uh, to eliminate that. And we also have a policy that the chair is the spokesman for the com uh, uh, committee and also something that we did in Smithfield is we have a Smithfield app. It's just for the school department. And if something, I mean, parents, we encourage the parents to uh, uh, subscribe to the app, it's free. And if there's something that immediately has to go out or change a date to that, it's there immediately. So parents, if they keep just, you know, um, looking at it once a day will be pretty much up to date of what's going on. We found it very successful. So that's another means of being able to communicate uh, to the parents. Uh, so they're well aware of what's going on. Great points, Jania. There's so many education um, related platforms out there specifically for school districts. Um, I also on your first point with regards to policies at meetings, um, I think that's a good one because um, it puts everyone on the committee um, on a level playing field um, and gives them all sort of a, um, a clear rule in that um, this isn't just their own opinion, they're not ignoring you, but this is how it is. These are rules that we established. Um, Jean's not being a uh, a bad person or ignoring her constituents um, because she's not texting during the meeting. So um, a great point about uh, creating a level playing field and having a backup that um, members can point to. Okay, we are I almost just near the hour, but I just wanna make sure, do we have any, any more questions or points um, that anyone wants to make. Again, today we only delved into um, social media and, and newsletters, communication in general. Um, there are um, several other platforms out there and different various ways um, to be communicating um, that we could talk about for a while. So I don't want to ignore those, um, but just due to time constraints, we um, picked our top two. Lauren, it looks like we have two more questions, uh, Diane and Gina. Hi, Diane Cardio Bowdy Westerly, um, eight years in on school committee. And we've had issues with this stuff over the years, and it's a tough area. What I would say is the first thing is make sure you do stay in your own lane. Um, understand the role of the superintendent and the district versus your role as a school committee member or chair. Um, and you know, retweeting or reposting stuff that's already on the district website is, is harmless. I think that's great because it's just getting more information out there. Also during meetings, we've had issues with people doing that very same thing, texting um, with people either at the day is with us or um, members of the public. And it, it's tough because you can't, it, other than setting policy, you can't really stop it because it's a second amendment violation, but that doesn't mean that we don't all know what's right. So it's like, just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. Correct. Um, Good rule. <laughs> yeah, and, and I would say um, for the school folks out there, I think you just um, raised uh, some great points. If you set ex certain expectations for students, um, you should set certain expectations for yourselves um, as adults and as, as role models. If you shouldn't be um, in your biology class um, in front of your teacher um, texting uh, as a signal um, that you're not listening to what they're saying um, and not present for the classroom or for the meeting, um, you should expect you should expect that um, as yourselves as adults and set that standard as well. 
And it looks like one more question from Gina Bay. Hi, it's not a question, really more of a comment also mm -hmm. um, just related to this topic. Um, the our school committee has set up governing principles uh, that we reaffirm on an annual basis that touch upon um, you know, expected behaviors um, that clearly delineate um, the roles between superintendent and the committee um, and who's there. <laughs> you know, that's another way that could make it very clear what's expected of committee members and um, how we operate at meetings. So. I found actually that that's a, a really, um good best practice for uh, councils of a lot of varieties to um, make sure at the beginning of any um, swearing in or, or whatnot to be able to have that um, reaffirmation of uh, the basic rules so everyone is on the same page um, and uh, to do it on an annual basis is super helpful. Any other questions, comments? Any closing remarks from Lauren and David? Um, you know, the only thing I would say is that, you know, these tools give you the opportunity and the chance to control your own communications destiny. Um, and if you have, uh, policies and procedures and rules and disclaimers, um, they can be very successful. Yeah, I think, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, I think if the last year has taught us everything is that anything um, is that communications um, is an ever evolving and ever improving um, thing. Uh, and we have to be on top of it as government officials. It's uh, shouldn't be an afterthought. It's part of our job. Um, and uh, the rumor mill uh, will always be out there, um, but I feel like it is uh, our duty and our obligation um, to provide people uh, with the facts, the memo, the link to the meeting, the guidelines, et cetera. Um, and beyond that, what they take from it uh, is on them, but uh, the failure and duty to warn uh, or update or provide information is ours. Um, and at the end of the day, uh, it can help you uh, as a candidate. It can help you as a member of a board or commission or committee um, and you uh, as a leader of your community. So um, I wish you all the best communications luck, and we are um, always here in the leagues, always here if you need us. Absolutely. <clears throat> Thanks for attending, everyone. And um, I will try to grab these slides from Lauren and David and sure. um, get those out to you via uh, an email. Okay. All right. Thanks for attending. Take okay. Care. Thank you. Have a great day.